This podcast is brought to you by Pragmatic Play, a leading game developer providing player favorites to the most successful brands across the industry. With an award-winning multi-product portfolio of slots, live casino, bingo, virtual sports, and more, Pragmatic Play is powering up new possibilities of play through one single API. Visit pragmaticplay.com and discover your favorite every time. And Magnus Anderson, happy new year to you. I don't know if you can still say that 15th of February, <laughs> but it's great to have you back on the podcast to you, uh, today. <laughs> you to you too, yeah, it's great to be back. <laughs> Absolutely. And I want to start this podcast today with a bit of a quiz, actually, for okay. both you and for the listeners, uh, because I have a fun question for you here. Um, I'm going to call out four companies, okay, four very well-known companies. Mm-hmm. Three of, uh, Evolution has a bigger market cap than three of them. Okay. But you have to guess which company is actually bigger than Evolution. Okay. Okay, all good. Okay, so I'm going to call them out. Okay, number one, Adidas. Two, eBay. Three, Spotify. And four, Warner Brothers. So Adidas, eBay, Spotify, and Warner Brothers. Which of these companies have a higher market cap than Evolution? Spotify? No. Evolution is bigger than Spotify. Okay. Uh, but I'll tell you, it's uh, Warner Brothers, uh, oh. actually. Uh, and that speaks vol- volumes on how incredibly um, well Evolution has been doing over the last couple of years, of course. Evolution has a higher market cap than Adidas, eBay, and Spotify. Unbelievable, right? Like $28.5 billion uh, as it stands today. Um, so I suppose that's uh, the grand entry here of the podcast today. But Magnus, uh, we b- both just came back from ICE in London uh, here the other week. And uh, I wanted to uh, kind of start the podcast on that uh, front today. What, what was your impressions uh, here from ICE London last week? How was it for you? Uh, it was was great. I was there for two days. And uh, it's uh, three years now since last time. I was there last time in 2020, like a few days before uh, COVID struck Europe. Uh, so uh, a lot of things have uh, happened there. Uh, and uh, now I, I was... Uh, even even though it was my second time, I was amazed by the size of it all. Really, I mean, I, I guess it was a little bit bigger than uh, three years ago now, but it, it's just so huge. You can't really, you can't really explain to people how big it is. I mean, it's. Uh, I, I heard it was six hundred different companies represented there, and some. Uh, yeah, I I can't even remember how how big these two uh, connected halls are, but I mean, it is so it's so big. That is one thing, of course. Uh, there are lots and lots of things to see, and uh, it's great fun. I mean, <laughs> people serve <laughs> alcohol, and uh, people are generally very happy and uh, very sociable, and uh, love to speak yep. to you, of course, when you walk around there and talk to people. And uh, uh, I guess some people, I, I assume at least, uh, speak a little bit more than what their managers perhaps would have wanted them to say because you get to hear all kinds of things about their plans for the year or the next few years and so on. So it's great, uh, especially when you're not uh, well known among uh, yeah, outside of Sweden. So but, uh, but Magnus, I mean, so, someone like you with the profile, you have to walk around with these glasses and oh, the yes, fake mustache, yeah, right? Yeah, right. I mean, like it's, it's, like it's an undercover great. detective. And uh, it, it's great because only the Swedish companies know who I am. So uh, me enough, and uh, some other Swedish investors and analysts, we can walk around there and roam the halls and, <laughs> and yeah, ask yeah, people enough. about everything. And that was exactly the same thing back in 2020 when we were there. And we uh, back then, of course, from, from a Swedish, a strictly Swedish perspective, NetEnt was uh, still yeah. very re- relevant company. And uh, uh, you could see back then, uh, yeah, you could see pretty much what was going to happen to NetEnt, I think. And that goes for some other companies as well. I mean, I, I'm, uh, I, I don't uh, look t- too much on the, the physical uh, casino side or not not at all, uh, just sports betting, but online casino only. And it's interesting to see that uh, there are several new companies uh, that have uh, come onto the scene uh, since since 2020. So there are lots of new faces, lots of new companies. And when, when you look at the... Uh, I mean, from from live casino perspective, there are lots and lots of uh, smaller companies now, and I think that because the the growth is so big uh, within the live sector, and also of course within, within the slots sector, so 
There are lots and lots of capital that has been pushed into this sector and lots and lots of uh, people with uh, uh, ideas uh, have uh, gotten funding and they are, uh, I mean, they're represented there now. And I can suspect that not all of them will be there for ICE um, 24, but uh, let's see, let's see in a year. <laughs> but uh, those, those were my main uh, takeaways, I guess. Yeah, and you know, Magnus, I'm I'm growing up in a little village in southern Småland called uh, Tingsryd, and uh, I would, if we to make a comparison of how big uh, ice is, I would say that um, the entire Excel, the entire venue, is approximately as big as Tingsryd is uh, as, a, as a village. <laughs> you can relate uh, but, this. Yeah. It's a fun fact, actually. It's um, it is the biggest conference that is uh, taking place within Excel in London. It's actually the biggest conference in in oh. the United Kingdom, more or less. It's mm. more than fifty thousand registrations, and it's the only conference that is using the entire space of of Excel, which is a, a fun fact for myself as a conference organizer mm. as well, of course. Um, but you mentioned here, um, you know, it's interesting to see what others are doing and and um, uh, other innovation in in, in the space. Something that I think was impossible to miss at ICE is that the biggest uh, exhibitor of the entire conference was uh, Pragmatic Play, right? Mm-hmm. So, which is uh, kind of the, the nemesis on, if you on will, square to, uh, evolution meter. on a square meter basis, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, this is uh, obviously from Pragmatic's point of view, it's a statement, right? Like they want oh, to... Yes. Uh, they want to show the industry that they are not just another much, supplier much anymore. Uh, three, of course, three years ago, they were not. Yeah. Uh, they, that was not the big. Um, exactly, and they, they capitalized essentially of uh, last year. There was a, a big stand space that came available, and they just booked up, you know, a massive, massive okay. stand space yeah. to to really, really make a a, a statement to the industry that uh, they are, you know, they are not to be underestimated. Basically, no. did you get, get that impression as well? And like, does this scare you a bit that like Pragmatic is taking such a big space? Uh, in the industry right now and, and be front and center to, 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 I mean, to everyone. You mean uh, from as an investor in uh, evolution? Yes. Now, now I, I'm not, I would be scared if they were to um, uh, deliver even closely to evolution when it comes to live gaming, which they are not. They are very much the copycat of evolution and uh, the distance between those companies and all and that goes for for Playtech as well, it has it has, it has not decreased. If anything, as Evolution recently said, uh, it's uh, probably increased the, the, the difference there because uh, you could you could see that their the quality of their uh, games when it comes to live now only live here right. uh, you can see the quality of their games there has improved uh, markedly since before and they I mean they, they were so small I think they had like. Uh, uh, a few dozen tables three years ago, and uh, I, I wasn't there last year because of different uh, for re- different reasons. But uh, that you could really see a difference there. They're, they're much better now to deliver, but still, it is basically that they they managed to make uh, decent copies of the games that Evolution, uh, some of the games that Evolution uh, made like three years ago, something like that. And they they couldn't they couldn't. Um, at all match uh, crazy time which evolution debuted on on ice 2020 when i was there last time uh, and no, none of them can can deliver on that level and i think that says a lot when it comes to slots of course they are very very big and they're growing and uh, I, I i can't say that i have a, a very good uh, insight into that but i also know that they are growing a lot in asia because that's what you hear when you uh, talk to people and of course, as a private company, as compared to a listed company, which Playtech and Evolution and several other companies are, as a private company, they can perhaps be a little bit um, uh, less restrained when it comes to where they have the license and all those kinds of things. But uh, that also, I guess, will mean that they would have difficulties going into the different states in America uh, with a live solution uh, because of this, uh, yeah. The re- regulatory landscape and very very demanding uh, uh, authorities in those states, but uh, it, it's it's obvious that a lot has happened there, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's definitely one to watch. That's for sure. Um, if if you look at uh, the other potential competitors here at Evolution, small and big, did you see any other uh, innovation in the space? So did you see any other nope. companies that is essentially nope. worth to keep an eye out for, or is it? Yeah, only I mean, you, should, you should keep an eye out of them. But I, I mean, I, I, I uh, it, it's 
it's more it's more than it, it, you you walk around and you see, you see these these funny things like this robotic uh, yes. solutions that uh, they they are Innovation trying lab. out in a few companies i saw a chinese company i can't remember what they're called they were close to the evolution um displays but i mean they had uh, robotic arms that were dealing blackjack to uh, to the players oh, and there, there was another one that you tweeted about today that uh, right. had um, this uh, ro- ro- robotic camera that goes around right. the films and I, I got almost seasick look, uh, watching it and uh, I, I, I can't <laughs> really see that as uh, any anything like uh, uh, serious competition because uh, we are people and we like that, that that's why you have the live casino and uh, I'd be very surprised if uh, too many people likes to uh, interact or uh, what you should call it with a robot instead of a, a human. I mean, th- that's that's what makes uh, the live experience so much better than than these uh, RNG uh, casino solutions that you uh, that we've had for I mean more than twenty years now in Europe, and uh, I, I can't really see that. And also. Uh, I mean, there was this company that won the live casino supplier of the year uh, recently, and yep, uh, Bombay. We, we talked a lot with them, yeah. and I, I can't Bombay. really see. I, I can't remember now what they're called, but uh, I, I couldn't see the. How could they win this? To, to be frank, I mean, uh, I, I, there's nothing wrong with the company, but I mean, how could they possibly win this award over Evolution? I can't see, and I talked to lots of other people also, and I said, how is this possible? Because there was nothing there that impressed me. I mean, there was a decent, uh, decent displays and uh, decent quality and decent everything. But I mean, uh, I, I can't really understand that. But uh, of course, I'm biased also as, as everyone who's invested in one company. But I can't really see. Uh, I, I couldn't really see anything like that. And it, it sounds like this uh, famous last words when, when you say that. But um, <laughs> uh, I, I wasn't impressed, and I. Really, no one that I talked to, I mean, talked to lots of analysts from Sweden, from Britain, from Hong Kong, from uh, Germany, Israel, uh, yeah, uh, America, of course. And uh, I mean, you, you really, when, when, you, when you walk around there, you, you can see very clearly that uh, that uh, when, when it comes to live casino, ev- evolution is, is, is the king. And it's, it's, very, it's very obvious. And uh, I, I always say that they're, they're, they remind me so much about Apple. Uh, not that they will be as big a company as Apple, not at all. But I mean, I, I followed uh, Apple very, very closely, just like I have uh, with uh, Evolution the last uh, five or six years. But from like 2011 to 2019 or something like that, I was following everything that Apple did. So I, I know that company uh, pretty well, and they, they they are so so much alike in their in what they do. And, I mean, they have just a few products. They don't uh, farm out in every direction, trying to uh, look for more revenue with low margin revenue or anything like that they have just very very few things that they do and they invest heavily into those so they always keep ahead of the competition always i mean there's i mean when you look at this new game uh that which we didn't uh, get to see everything about but i mean the the new um, headline game from evolution funky times and right. I mean, you just look at it, you understand that is expensive, an expensive game. I mean, really expensive game. And they're not afraid to do this. And they, they won't succeed every time. They had, especially in 2021, they had lots of, uh, lots of, uh, uh, I shouldn't say failures, but uh, several games that didn't live up to the expectations. But uh, that, that is also pretty much like Apple. They've had several products, uh, this speaker that they have and others that haven't really... Uh, Apple Music uh, and uh, this uh, Apple TV Plus or things like that. They, they, they are no, no successes at all, but they, they, they try around, they invest very, very heavily and they are laser focused on um, the experience the customer has. The customer experience is everything. It, it should run very smoothly. There should be no uh, lag. There should be no uh, problems whatsoever. Every, everybody should uh, trust and we, when you have the evolution log, logo, it's exactly like when you have the Apple logo on something, you, you trust that product. I mean, I, I pay a premium, perhaps not as a, as a player, you don't pay anything, but um, that's, 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 it's, a bit, it's a bit of another uh, thing there. But uh, evolution can charge more than uh, their competitors because they have this level of uh, quality. And uh, I, th- I think that is very good, but... Um, of course, it costs. I mean, we can see that in the margins now. Evolution after COVID have uh, had a lot, 
uh, or catching up on investments to do. And you can see that, but that is also very much what you can see in Apple sometimes when they have to invest very, very heavily. And also in other companies that are very, very focused on uh, on uh, having a great experience. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And uh, speaking of Bombay Studios here, who won the um, the, the live casino studio of the year, yeah. uh, we actually we share offices with uh, Bombay Studios. Oh, we sit, we sit next to you. <laughs> we say we sit next door to uh, to to Bombay Studio. Um, okay. And um, what what I can say about them is that they are specialized in the uh, VIP experience. So mm-hmm. Bombay specifically are not looking to uh, kind of become a live studio for the masses. They are specifically targeting the VIP player. Okay. Um, and they do that through obviously the live studio and, and um, they kind of create this like 360 turnkey solution where they bring the player live in person. They have like different casino products. And yeah, so, yeah, so it's, it's, yeah, yes, yeah, so, so it's a bit of a, it's a, it's a very different uh, say, yes. experience than, than what Evolution is trying to mm-hmm. uh, achieve here, which is obviously going to the masses. Um, but nonetheless, it's, it's quite interesting. I mean, uh, uh, Magnus, you mentioned uh, Funky Time here, which is um, uh, Martin Collison, um, you know, he hinted to this in the quarterly report that they were going to launch the most expensive, uh, biggest flagship game that they ever created, more or less. And that turned out then to be Funky Time. If you, if you, um, if you, like, what's your first impressions of the game? We haven't seen anything being released officially uh, outside of ICE and um, just in general of the other games that they've launched. Uh, there isn't much to uh, consume and to follow up on other than what we saw in the stand at ICE. What's yes. your impressions of the uh, roadmap? Yeah, I mean, uh, as, as, you, as you say there, I mean, we didn't get to see everything and obviously Evolution is uh, a bit reluctant to show us too much because they know that they are being copied and they only had two games that they showed us at ICE, which was a little bit bit of a letdown. I was hoping to see lots of games, but uh, when it comes to live, they only had two, but they were also very clear that there will be several other uh, ones launched uh, this year. But I think uh, it, it was very, very impressive what I saw. I think they are uh, they are likely to succeed with this game. It seems like they have uh, learned a lot uh, from things that work and things that don't work. Uh, when it comes to this interaction between the RNG parts and uh, or the um, yeah uh, yeah the, the real persons and uh, the animated the characters and things like that, but they have perfected this for a long time. Of course, uh, Monopoly Live when that came around was really an eye I catch it. Oh Jesus, <laughs> they they can do that in a good way, but um, the. Uh, I think it, it has a very nice vibe. This uh, 70s is popular and uh, all this with music and disco and things like that. It's pretty funny, but I, I guess it's it's pretty much the same uh, experience I had when I saw um, Crazy Time the first time, that uh, this is really impressive. I mean, really, really impressive. Lots of things happen. It's logical the way it works with the, uh, uh, the bonus rounds and things like that. And... I think, uh, yeah, I, I think it will be a very, very good, uh, good game. And yeah. um, but do you think yeah, it's a risk? Really that it, that it, uh, yeah. could, could it be um, a, a cannibalizing game from Crazy Time though? Because it has some similarities. Yes. Even the name yes, is the same, so on and so forth. It could, it could absolutely, and it, it should have. I mean, logically, it should have because it should uh, appeal to the same players. But last time, of course, we saw this that Monopoly Big Bowler. Uh, came around and should have cannibalized Monopoly Live, but exactly the the the, ob- uh, the other thing happened that Monopoly Live got mo- much more popular as soon as Monopoly. And you can really see that in the, sat- the statistics that okay. some of these guys uh, publish online that uh, it almost doubled in popularity when this uh, other Monopoly. Uh, game came around uh, and uh, but of course uh, crazy time is now so big with like 20,000 sometimes yeah. consecutive players so I'm I'm sure at least in the beginning uh, they will take players from crazy time and there will be lots of uh, yeah specials from the different operators regarding this game will uh, yeah in the beginning yeah, yeah. but we will have to see because it's very interesting if you you draw more attention to a certain ca- uh, type of game it doesn't matter what what uh, what supplier it is it's it's interesting if you just grow the, the, the complete the, the whole market by uh, introducing new games instead of taking 
competing with yourself, which is the last thing that any company w- would want to do. I mean, that's that's a bad thing. It's one thing if you have competition, but it's it's strange if you just steal your own uh, players. But I think uh, with, with the growth that we see in the live uh, sphere, there uh, will be lots lots of. Um, I mean, the, the sum total of the two games, I'm, I'm sure, will be much bigger than uh, than Crazy Time. But uh, let's see. I mean, it, it won't uh, show perhaps in May when it's released, uh, if it's uh, coming according to plan. But at least uh, in the fall, uh, in the autumn, yep. we I think we will see. Absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah, so, we can come back to that and discuss it. Let's see. We'll follow. We'll uh, follow up for sure when the uh, game releases. Uh, we'll, results or something like that. Then, yes. then the jury should be uh, in again. We'll, we'll do a games night together, Magnus, you and me, and we'll play some funky Absolutely. time and we'll see what our freshers are. I, I like that idea. Uh, moving on to the um, year-end report that was released a couple of weeks ago. Um, I want to ask you, was there anything in the report that stood out to you? I mean, it, we, we can both agree, Evolution is a machine at this point. It's, um, it, is, it is the constant in an, in an uncertain world. Uh, with yeah. all the uncertainties going on, Evolution is the, is the constant that always uh, delivers, so to say. But was there, was there anything that stood out to you in the report? Anything in particular that was... Your growth in North America, I think, is very, very impressive, what's happening there, especially since there are no big states that have regulated recently. And we have a 66% year-over-year growth in North America. And that that is very, very impressive, I think. And I, I, I tweeted uh, when I was sitting on the um, underground in, uh, in London uh, on, on the Tuesday last week, uh, what was the situation three years ago, what's the situation uh, now? And one of the things that I noticed there was that in uh, evolutions... Uh, sales in um, revenue in North America back then, if that was the fourth quarter of 19 then, uh, compared to uh, fourth quarter of 22, so three years later, uh, the revenue there for revenue uh, was 6.6 million euros, and the last time now, three years later, was 56.2 million euros. So it's like uh, eight or nine times bigger, which is unbelievable. And uh, that goes for b- many of the numbers for evolution. And of course, I mean, that is the most striking, but otherwise I think it was uh, not a very dramatic or... Uh, um, yeah, the, the report was pretty much as it has been most of the time, uh, with few exceptions. You have very healthy growth uh, there on uh, 36% year over year. Uh, you have... Um, a little bit lower margins, but that goes only to show that evolution is uh, w- the, the most important thing. I think is that they are um, investing so heavily now. They they had they had to start investing now after COVID. About I think they started about a year ago, uh, investing far more than before. I mean, during COVID. I mean, I think it was last time I was uh, with you and talked about evolution we talked about uh, the stock market reaction in the spring of 2021 but that was uh, in the middle of covid uh, and evolution could not invest as much so uh, many many costs were lowered uh, lots uh, far lower personnel expenses because uh, uh, some people were furloughed and they didn't get paid and and uh, so they didn't have to work either but uh, then then you had very very low costs and uh, huge interest in casino games uh, during covid so you had everything there uh, into uh, made a kind of the perfect storm i guess uh, for a while and uh, you had lots of interest also from america and so on and the stock just shut up like this and then of course a reality yeah. hit there when they yeah. had to start invest, and we can see that now in the margin. The EBTA margin is um, around sixty nine percent, which is ex- extremely high. There's no, there's no one else almost uh, with that kind of margin. But I think we will have a bit of a pressure there. We won't have the margin expansion for for a while now, uh, as we've had now for for the last year, because there is so many people getting hired all the time, and uh, wages go up. Of course, we have inflationary pressures and all that, all kinds of things, and they also changed the mar- margin margin guidance there from. Uh, 69 to 71, they changed it to 68, 68 to 71%. To yeah. But as I, I remember, I said last time uh, we spoke after uh, the third quarter report, I mean, 
that does not matter whatsoever. If they have 68% or 70% or 71% margin, that, that is not interesting at all. And it's healthy for a company. Uh, just like I said, Apple has always been doing It's healthy for a company to plow money into good investments, well, investments that are at least, at least like 80, 90% very, very well spent money. If you do that, uh, you will grow in the future. And, and they always say it. Every quarterly uh, conference, they, they point out, uh, <laughs> it's almost like they, 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 they think they have to tell us this every time and uh, uh, think we're slow, slow to get it. But I mean, they say, we will always uh, prioritize margin, uh, sorry, uh, revenue <laughs> over margin, because yeah. revenue is uh, what, uh, what they're um, what they're going after all the time, which they should do. I mean, and it's a competitive landscape and uh, lots of new competitors, and especially on the slot sides and nice. uh, and so on. But they, they have really to just keep on pushing there. And uh, even if they take a hit, even if their margin, uh, EBTA margin will go down to 65%, as long as they are growing well, I think that is uh, only healthy. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the margin expansion will come later on when they are... Yeah, they have built all these studios and hired all those people and so on because um, that is expensive. You have to start paying wages uh, a long time before people really are productive when you expand. And uh, I think that will go on for some time, but then we will all again see a margin expansion there. And I have said many times that I think that uh, evolution will end up one day with the 80% EBTA margin. I'll, I'll see, see how that pans out, but I think in a few years' time they, they will be there because uh what what they do is so scalable basically and even if they have to invest sometimes a lot i mean this has happened before when they uh, went into georgia uh, uh, yes georgia uh, the country is called in english and um uh they took a hit on the margin i guess like uh, four or five years ago but uh now that that is a huge studio that's just uh producing profits for them so i think that is healthy but yeah. uh, the market sometimes look too much on the margins for evolution. And also they look a bit too much on the RNG side, which is, of course, a small, small part of the business with 18% yeah. of the revenue. Yeah, to your point, uh, the on the RNG side where the actual competition is taking place at the moment, I saw some like slot tracker the other day that there is now close to 30,000 games on the market yeah. uh, divided by... I don't know, it's like four or 500 uh, different game studios. Yeah, essentially. It's, it's absolutely crazy. Uh, and, and something like 30% of all those games and all those game studios have popped up in the last year, right? Yeah. So it is um, a huge amount of influx. And you yes. see that a lot when you walk around the show, show floor at ICE, for example, mm. that there is all these like minor studios that are popping to life left, right and center, which is like, you know, small, uh, small booths. And actually one of the, um, one of, one of the, uh, one of the senior game uh, producers at um, at Evolution, he uh, started uh, another uh, game studio now uh, recently called Octoplay. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a guy called Call. There, he, he used to be one of the senior people in the um, in the, in the team producing games at, at Evolution. X, X Red Tiger. There's like a lot of the X Red Tiger people who have now formed a new studio called Octoplay. Something to to um, look out for as well. But there's mm -hmm. so many game studios popping up left, right, and center, and that just plays into this narrative that it's just very difficult to compete on the RNG side. Yes. That said, Evolution has set this um, ambition right that they want to grow uh, double digits uh, each year. They haven't shown the uh, uh, the um, success on that front yet but um what, what do you feel do we, do we, we will start seeing i, I, I think uh, it's 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 a bit of a stretch uh, to hope for but i, I think it is it's, it is a stretch target uh, for them i think they uh, they they want to have this to uh, both for internal and external communication this is what we want to do our aim is not just to uh, to stand still here in the face of all this competition but uh, and ha uh, defend our share. But uh, it is, of course, very, very difficult. And when you have so many new companies, it goes without saying that it's, it's not really that perhaps you're losing a uh, share if, if you're not growing as fast as the market goes to your normal competitors. I mean, the big, the big houses. I uh, mean, you can use, you can miss out just by there is, are so many new companies and they, of course, all those slots 
are uh, oh, perhaps not all, but many of those slots get some kind of traction and uh, some get pop uh, are popular and then they take some share you know, of the whole. So I, I think it would be very, very impressive if they uh, could grow by 10% in the landscape now. But on the other hand, if you look, if you take the long view there, just like with, um, I said uh, about um, uh, live producers that, I mean, how many of these companies are making money? I mean, you, you have a certain overhead. You have you have to hire people. You have to, I mean, many, many of the slots are not that popular and doesn't mean really that they are bad, but they just um, disappear into this enormous... Um, yeah, into the void. Yeah, in, into the void. I mean, they, they just... The, if I, I can't remember now, but I, I heard uh, on Malta uh, on your conference there uh, the number of slots that come out every week. I, I can't remember if it was like a fifty or hundred or something like that. But I mean, really, <laughs> there is something com completely different as compared to the live games. I yeah, mean, oh, yeah. here's a new live game now, the uh, new thing from Evolution yeah. or Playtech, where uh, like this, but you have slots just coming out like that. Uh, and it's, I mean, it's also a consequence of it being so much easier. And I mean, extreme, yeah. uh, unbelievably more easy to uh, make uh, new uh, slots or start a slots uh, producing company as compared to trying to um, uh, start competing with um, in the live space. So Exactly. And so it becomes commoditized, the product, uh, to yes, some extent. But, but where I, you, I, you, you have the smaller before, game studios are fighting for price, you know, so the, 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 there's a price for taking place uh, there, which is maybe not uh, to the benefit of evolution always on the RNG but, side specifically. But as I said before, I think, uh, I mean, it's a it's, it's very uh, simple matter mathematics that uh, slots now has stayed at around 19-18% uh, of evolutions revenues but that's mainly because they have bought new companies I mean otherwise it would be less than 15% perhaps 12-13% and I think right. the slots will uh, over time uh, decrease to like a uh, tenth of evolutions revenues uh, that, that's, that's I mean if we have a 30-35% growth in live and we have a five to ten percent growth in slots i mean th that is what's going to happen and uh, i think that that is not really a problem because evolution is a live company and uh, yeah uh, that would be uh, far worse uh, for yeah. some of their competitors we, we, who really re rely a lot on slots i mean yeah, yeah. but then on the other hand Mag uh, magnus then you have uh, companies like play and go or pragmatic is the best example here which just a couple of years ago was a quite small studio and today pragmatic um as far as i understand through what people say is uh, is bigger than all the rng studios of evolution combined mm -hmm. right so uh, no limit city uh, uh, net and big time gaming uh, red tiger uh, combine them and pragmatic are bigger than than mm. all of the, those studios together so um with the right strategy um with the right roadmap um and and, and with the right games uh, it's not impossible to actually break through, but it's obviously very difficult, right? It's it's not um, it's not for the faint of heart. I, I think actually, they have like, invested the heavily like... into that yeah. <laughs> space as well. So I don't yeah. think it's just that they make so uh, nice games exactly. and everybody wants to play them. Yeah. But it, but it seems one of the advantages of pragmatic play is the uh, is the, the pricing specifically. Is uh, mm -hmm. say that um, uh, pragmatic are producing. The best RNG games out there, uh, some would argue, and they own the, the share of wallet in most operators are huge with Permatic, mm. but they also couple that with uh, with pretty reasonable prices, good promotions, uh, aggressive account management, stuff like that. So what then happens is that the operators are more active to promote the uh, the pragmatic games with all those factors combined. Mm. And it seems to me, what I hear at least, you know, as an outsider, is that um, evolution is a lot more rigid uh, when it comes to any form of negotiation, mm -hmm. or um, well. yes. uh, and um, uh, they are not willing to uh, to move their prices even for bigger operators. And also, uh, kind of the promotions that are being rolled out to the operators and to the players are not as aggressive as uh, pragmatic play, for example. Mm -hmm. and so. Um, the question is, uh, as we go forward, if if, uh, if Evolution, from a commercial standpoint, are willing to be a bit more aggressive to invest a more uh, into the games in order to then produce more revenue, because we go back to this, um, go, go back to what you mentioned earlier, that they will prioritize revenue over margins. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and perhaps that is the key 
in order to to get more space. Uh, to, yeah, I mean, it, it's difficult for, for both of us who are outside of uh, this business yes. looking into it. So we can only speculate there. But I think uh, that that is also a similarity to Apple that I have. That I mean, this is the price. Uh, app, that's basically what Apple does. With, this is the price to uh, to buy an iPhone if you want to yes. resell it. Uh, and I think that is a successful strategy as long as you can deliver the highest quality. Right. Because it's difficult to see anyone throwing out evolution because they didn't uh, go along with a 10% uh, uh, price decrease or something like that. Uh, it's, um, it's, it's, it's hard to see that anyone who has evolution now and uh, lots and lots of players playing evolutions, especially the live games, of course, uh, that they would just uh, throw them out. But uh, And also like no. slots like Starburst and things. Why, why wouldn't you want to have that? Why would you try right. to make a point like that? It's, it's like, uh, I mean, if you're a reseller of um, home electronics and uh, you, you try to, I mean, I, I'm a big customer here with Apple. I want to, uh, I mean, yeah. I, I heard once someone at Evolution, this, this is several years ago, that... Uh, I, I can't really remember exactly what it was, but it was uh, someone who said that, I mean, pe people really don't play that uh, kind of game uh, with e evolution because it's um, it's not very credible to say that, you. I mean, this is what I'm going to pay, otherwise I throw you out. That That's not uh, the kind, at least back then, and this is like four years ago or something like that, when I asked someone uh, somewhere that, I mean, was it like? I mean, there was lots of talk in the, in the Swedish media, when Swedish analysts and so on. I mean, they will have price pressure because there's so much competition. And, and I said, do do they play this game with you? And they said, no, not not really, because it it wouldn't convince anyone to say that they will throw us out because we don't go yeah. along with this. And um, uh, I think no, they're in a powerful position, evolution. Yeah, of course, uh, absolutely. Uh, when your creators yeah, yeah. are dependent on them, uh, yeah. it's it, we can only speculate about that. But if it's true that uh, they don't negotiate the price, I, I think it's it's likely that it's true, and it's likely that they can keep and they know what they're doing when they do that. So, and, uh, yeah, uh, I, they they're not that hungry for another. Uh, percentage point of growth that uh, because yeah. uh, if, if you get into a price war uh, it's it's difficult because then the margins will just go down and perhaps not directly but they will go down over the years and that is not something that a company like evolution which uh, go of course for this uh, uh, high quality uh, product uh, would ever want to do they want to um, compete on the experience and not on price yeah, yeah. But there's Fair also enough. there's also the good thing there, if, uh, quite different from Apple, because the high prices that Apple charge will be will be recharged, uh, will be sent over to the con the consumer when it comes to uh, any supplier of uh, games. Of course, it's uh, their customers, not the uh, not the not the player who's. Go I mean, there's it's not like uh, if you're a player, you have to uh, pay more, or I mean have less uh, chance of winning because you play an evolution game and it doesn't it, it, it's not transferred onto the, the player there which is of course a very good thing for evolution and their competitors that uh, um, as, as long as they are competitive of course with their, with their games because uh, people will play uh, the games that they like they will not uh, uh, they will not stay with the brand like that uh, if, if they're not competitive. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, just one small thing that we've been kind of looking into here in the background too from the quarterly report that I took note of is um, Evolution disclosed uh, how big the biggest uh, client is um, mm. of, of Evolution and um, yeah, kind of like a customer dependency index, if you will. Uh, and they disclosed that the biggest client now uh, takes up 14% of the entire uh, revenue uh, yes. or accounts for 14% revenue of the group, which is significantly higher than uh, previous years. Mm -hmm. And top one to five in our accounts uh, for 30% of entire group um, revenue. And so in the background, we thought that was interesting. And we were like, who is big enough to account for 14% of group revenue? Because if we count backwards, what that means um, in terms of GDR then, so if you take the revenue uh, that 14% uh, of the entire revenue uh, of the year, uh, that would that would basically translate into 1.7 billion uh, GDR 
uh, that the uh, online operator has to generate in order to in order to generate uh, that amount of uh, fees to to evolution and if we assume that evolution would have a 25% share of wallet uh, in that uh, online operators um, uh, yeah, total revenue mix that would then translate to 6.8 billion um, euro GDR which is like money. there is no operator that is that big basically if you look at you know in, in the background there are a couple of operators that we don't know how big they are the likes of stake for example um, that are operating in the crypto world we don't really know how big stake are but the assumption is that they are becoming the biggest online casino in the world bigger than bet 365 and so on mm. um, but they are not big enough like a stake is is um we, we are we are estimating them to be about 1.5 billion DDR a year, something along those lines, but definitely not 6.8 billion DDR. And they, um, what we came, what we realized is that it's probably not a operator. It's oh. more likely to be a uh, aggregator. Absolutely, yes. Uh, and, and most likely an aggregator that is operating in kind of like Asia, Curacao, kind of like, yeah. The, the the grayer kind of territory but we are very curious to understand like who that aggregator is because obviously that aggregator itself has grown massively in the last year let's say it's something we are looking into here in the background <laughs> um see if we can we can come up with something interesting here maybe yeah, yeah but you have this uh, very big growth there of like uh, 50 percent um no perhaps not uh... Yeah, they, they have a very, uh, I, I don't have the numbers here, but they have, of course, a very nice growth still in Asia. So that, that would speak yep. for some aggregator with lots that, of... Traffic. It would very likely be an Asian-based aggregator. Yes. Yeah. And uh, all, also the fact that if, if you compare the games, at least the ones that I've seen and uh, so on in, in Asia, uh, the, uh, I mean, those big, uh, big producers, games there, they are very, very basic. And I think that... Uh, as long as, uh, I mean, Evolution's game, the, the difference there uh, between the games, I think, is bigger than in uh, in other jurisdictions like in North America, South America, Europe, and so on. So I think that, uh, that, that, that is also part of the reason that Evolution is still growing. I mean, not like they did before, but then now they're growing from a much, much, much... Um, much, much higher numbers. And uh, that, that could also, uh, of course, uh, contribute to yeah, yeah, interesting to follow. Yeah, uh, start to start running off a little bit today, Magnus. I want to just take yeah. a step, uh, kind of back, and look at the whole macro picker in the world right now because um, we are moving into an interesting territory now. Where last time we spoke, the invest uh, investment sentiment was uh, very negative. Let's say that we are heading Absolutely. into. Uh, uh, darker times and so on and so forth. Whereas but evolution uh, today, had turned around back then. I, I guess. And uh, evolution I guess turned around. Evolution stock had turned around. <laughs> That's definitely true. And oh, and by the way, we didn't know anything about where it would go. But uh, yeah, you, you talked about the, the, the I mean, the the. the the valuation back then and that has yeah. changed dramatically since uh, oh my god three yeah years, <laughs> three years, yeah, three years. yeah, yeah. and i mean a few uh, months ago when we spoke <laughs> yeah i mean can we give a, a round of applause for martin carlson for like yeah, the best yeah. time was, uh, purchase ever he bought at the absolute bottom of evolution yes. obviously it was announced and it's up like 60 percent so i think and, uh, uh, Imagine that's, the confidence that's, that's you have. Uh, a pre-tax profit of uh, 60 oh million Swedish kronor from this 100 million <laughs> yeah. Swedish kronor investment. <laughs> imagine, the, imagine the confidence you must have when you, like, yeah. your whole life is committed in one stock. Absolutely. And, and then you still decide to, uh, to push in an extra investment into that stock. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm well, that, that was very interesting. It was uh, pretty much yeah. the biggest inside. If, if we talk about people who are uh, employed by the company, founders, of yeah. course, I mean, super rich founders, Founders have, have yeah. like uh, Stefan Persson and H and M and so on. They they buy uh, far more. But when you talk about uh, uh, people who are uh, salaried employees, uh, right. management, uh, it is probably the biggest uh, purchase of anyone in Sweden uh, ever. Yeah. Uh, in, Amazing. In, Amazing. Uh, yeah. Round of applause for uh, for Martin Karlsson. I mean, he should have all the credits in the world for that. Uh, big big baller. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, so taking the macro picture now, Magnus, I just wanted to ask you as well, uh, you know, there is this um, two narratives that are that are being spoken about right now, which is one of them is that we are heading towards a soft landing, you know, the CPI is going down in the US and and, and the economy is kind of like looking to, to, to get the soft landing that that many people have been hoping for. But the other narrative is that, well, 
there are so many jobs that are being added still in the US market. This is not exactly what the feds want to see. Maybe yeah. they'll still increase interest rates much more. And actually, we are heading into this stagflation that people were talking for in, in a year's time. We are just like kind of like behind the behind the corner from like something yes. worse. What, what do you think? Which direction are, is the world going to take in 2023? What's your like general uh, I, I, thoughts I think, on the economy? Uh, the, the market, right or wrong, uh, rightly or wrongly, as uh, I mean, uh, the market always looks at what is on the horizon and horizon. I mean, as far out as you can see what's what's yep. out there. If, if you look really closely, what, what, what do we see out there? <laughs> and there, there you can see some pain on the way, but you can see that the, the the market majority so the, the what what drives the market they see better times ahead over there and they didn't of course do that last year because they they just uh, thought about like a cesspool uh, pool of um, inflation and um, higher interest rates and uh, people losing their jobs and a new big recession and so on but i i wasn't uh, convinced of that picture back then and uh, I'm, I'm cert- I certainly am not now because uh, you have you have this enormous inflation that that came along. But I mean, everything that goes up so quickly also comes down. I mean, it's like uh, the stock market. If something goes ahead of expectations, it just it goes like this, and then it comes down. And the good companies come back later on, and but uh, other companies just go down. And here you have with the inflation. It, when inflation goes from basically one percent to ten percent in a very short time. And you can see also the reasons behind this inflation, which is enormous, and we're just throwing out money, in, especially in the United States. And sooner or later, you will have inflation there. And then you also have, of course, this dreadful war in uh, Ukraine, and um, you have uh, lots of uh, you, got, you, you have some uh, difficulties still uh, uh, or had uh, last year uh, regarding. Um, uh, manufacture and uh, supply routes from China and so on because of uh, COVID. And if if that eases very, very much and interest rates go up and, and so on, then inflation will come down. I mean, <laughs> you don't live in Sweden now, I do. And we, we still have a horrible uh, inflation, but we are just behind the curve there, I think. And just like in, in Britain, uh, they have a horrible inflation now. But when you look at American inflation numbers for several months now, uh, yeah. especially if you look oh, yeah. at um, the, the current, uh, what's happening now, because sometimes you get fooled by looking at the inflation numbers one, one, in a one year sense. Uh, you can still have, because of, so it went up so quickly, it, can, it takes time for it to go down. Uh, that's only natural. It's, it's the same thing when you look at uh, quarterly results there. If, uh, if something happened very, very uh, yeah. If you grow very much in the spring, you will have for a long time, even even though growth just goes absolutely flat, you will have nice year over year numbers mm-hmm. for some time. But it goes the same way in, in the other direction for inflation, because you want to know inflation. Uh, you can't really see that uh, so clearly uh, for some time, but you have to look at the, the, the monthly variations and so on. And that can you, perhaps you could start to see um lower uh, uh, i mean no no uh, inflation month over month or even negative inflation and uh, in time the yearly inflation rate will go down and i think that uh, i'm i'm always looking for of course companies and situation where the market is mispricing stocks and we talked a lot about evolution now and uh, but i guess lots of people want to want to hear about evolution but an example there with evolution i mean the market was always thinking that they, they wouldn't be uh, they were always uh, very naive, thinking that uh, the competitors would come much uh, more quickly than they did, and and so on. So the the, um, the market really mispriced that uh, stock. I mean, you can see that because it's gone up in a few years, uh, twenty times, and you still it's not very high uh, um, over. It's it's not at all um, value too high today. So I mean, it was very mispriced, but I think. That happens for individual stocks. It, it could happen even to a huge stock like Apple, which was uh, in the same situation many years that people thought, oh, they, they, they will not grow like this. And perhaps it's, um, yeah, I mean, the market was very s- slow to react there. But I think when we talk about these big things, the market is way more 
accurate in seeing what's happening because the market, of course, is all those participants, everybody seeing all kinds of things. And as a total, you have the market reaction and in the, the, the whole market uh, movement. And I think it's likely that the market is much more precise here as, as it was before. I mean, uh, those of us who uh, were, were around around the credit crisis in 2008, 2009, we remember how the market all of a sudden started to climb. And all of everybody, especially everybody who's very negative uh, uh, in the nature, they say, oh, this is crazy. I mean, look at this, people are losing their uh, jobs and look at the numbers now, inflation will be coming, bad things will happen. Yes, but when the market was looking there uh, on the horizon and they saw better times, and if the market can see that will, something will happen in the future, stocks will go up. And if it's it, no, this will be bad in the future, stocks will go down. And you can see that, I mean, uh, stocks, uh, the market started to, to fall way before we had this inflation debate and all those kinds of things. Uh, I mean, last January, uh, January of 2022. And people, oh, why, why, why is the market going down now? What's, what's happening? But the market is forward looking. And now we see that market is going up. And so many people we see in uh, FinTwit and so on, they, they, they make these short positions. No, no, look now, I've shorted this, I've shorted that. This is crazy. It has to go down. This is just a little bear trap. No, no, no. But I, I would never uh, take part in anything like that and fight, trying to fight uh, the market like that mm -hmm. because I'm, of course it can go down we can have a terrible uh, March and uh, April or anything like that but when, when uh, the market starts to see the light there in the tunnel at the horizon I think it's, it's, uh, it's very dangerous if you're on the wrong side of that move Absolutely. Okay. all about the hype train I, I like it uh, Magnus we stay positive here uh, Fantastic. Yeah, overall, Magnus, really great to dissect the uh, evolution, um, the uh, the ICE conference and everything in between here. As always, uh, Magnus, mm -hmm. it's a pleasure to have the opportunity to, to have you on here from time to time. Yeah. And uh, I wish you all the best, Magnus, and I will see you here uh, next time again, I hope. Absolutely. Anytime. Thank you.